Hi, I'm Kai Destiny with TNE Magazine, and we're joined today by the talented Romney Malco. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Kai. I appreciate it. It's no problem. I'm excited. Thank you. I know you're a very busy man, so let's just jump right into it. Um, what made you want to get into the entertainment industry? Um, just, you know, I just, um, I'm an anomaly. I had, you know, immigrant parents who encouraged it. <laughs> you know, all my friends with immigrant parents, all my friends, uh, their parents were like, you're going to be a lawyer, doctor, or an engineer. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to study these books. And my parents were like, hey, can you sing? You can dance. <laughs> you know, my dad was, um, you know, he, he was a DJ. So I was always encouraged. It, it started with music and then eventually became acting. Okay, because I know in the early 90s you were in a rap group called College Boys, and your song Absolutely. Victim of the Ghetto went number one on the rap charts. And what made That's you want to transition that from your rap career to an actor? Oh, I didn't. I didn't transition from a rap career to an actor at all, and I didn't, that wasn't, I, I, I didn't ask uh, <clears throat> that, you know, that I, it, it was, did so well for me that I swore that I would never do entertainment again. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so I was running that company from 97 uh, until about, I mean, that company stuck around for like 10 years, but I was running that com- uh, company from about 97 until I think it was like 2000, 2001, maybe. Uh, John Leguizamo uh, came into my life because he wanted me to do music for his movie. He had heard some okay. stuff that I had done back in the day for the Paula Abdul animated cat. And he was like, I want that vibe on my, on my movie. And, um, and so I was like, I got you. And that's basically uh, what transpired was us building a relationship and him insisting that I audition for his movie. <clears throat> and then the casting agent loved me so much. Oh, we passed it. That was it on the corner. Yeah, right there, Papa. That's cool. We can get out here. Um, are you sure you want to do that, dude? If you if you're down the wait, we'll have you. That'll be great. <laughs> All right, cool. You know what? I gotta let the readers know you're. No, you know what? You go ahead. You go ahead. We will take her stuff. You know what I mean? You know, because it's just gonna be that plus the restaurant. I'm sorry about that. Are you still there? Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. So where I left off was that, you know, we. We basically ended up working together, and his girlfriend, with his wife at the time, was like, Romney, Romney's not even a comedian, and you hang out with comedians. He's funnier than all of them. <laughs> She'd say that stuff like that. And so, um, you know, that was how he, yeah, he had me audition, and the casting agent fell in love with me and told everybody in Hollywood I was her favorite audition. And then the next thing you know, I had casting agents calling me like, hey, yo, we want you to come in. We heard from Wendy Kurtzman who was the casting agent, that you were really good, and, you know, do you have representation and all this other stuff. And I had all these agents calling, saying the same thing. And I just, I just went with it. Oh, good, good. Well, can you also let everyone know about your new movie coming out November 11th called Almost Christmas? Oh, yeah. So Almost Christmas is a trip because, you know, <laughs> bye-bye. Thank you, man. Dude, enjoy your journey back, man. All right, dude. Yeah. All right. Um, almost Christmas. It really is. Almost Christmas is a movie that is directed by Dave Talbert, produced by Will Packer for Universal Pictures, and it's a really heartfelt, funny movie that isn't dumbed down. You know what I mean? It's not like mm-hmm. oh, it's not a dumbed down movie. It's, it's got a, a great message. It's hard, you know, you know, yeah. It's, you know, it's just something I'm very proud to be a part of. It stars Danny Glover, Monique, yes. Kimberly Elise, uh, Jesse T. Usher, DC Youngfly, uh, Gabrielle Union also was a producer on the project, oh, uh, Nicole Ari Parker. I mean, it was like a big family on there. We have some really talented kids on there, um, you know, everything, and and David Talbert being a director with a, with a theatrical background, he just had a way of taking care of his actors that really, I feel like, really elevated everyone's performance. 
Now, Almost Christmas has an all-star cast. What did you take away from that experience? Um, I think the thing that I took away from it was that uh, one one thing that w- there's a couple of things that I actually took away from it is that you just never know where your biggest blessing is going to be. And I'm just going to say it. I'm going I'm to keep it 100. I was doing a movie called. I was doing a movie called. Um, I mean, I was doing a TV show called Mad Dogs for Amazon, mm-hmm. and that show was exhausting. It was exhausting, and it went on for five months. Um, we worked on the weekends, and you know, on our off day, we had to travel three hours to the other side of the island. And I just, I was emaciated by the end of that project. Mm-hmm. And what changed? I didn't want to do this project. I didn't want to do Almost Christmas because I was too tired. It was literally immediately after. But if there's one producer in Hollywood that I genuinely respect, care about, want to hear his opinion, believe in him and believe in his, and then really appreciate his integrity is Will Packer. And if Will Packer gets on the phone and tells me he needs me to do his movie, then I'm doing his movie. So I ended up flying out there and doing the movie, getting to bed and breakfast and everything. And I was even in a grumpy mood. You know, but I got out there. At least you admit to it. Oh, yeah, I told you on up to it, and he called me on my shit, you know. And I got out there, and it ended up being a blessing in so many ways. And then after the project, the director and I, Dave Talbert, began to discuss the possibilities of doing projects together. And I'm like, oh, my God, this project that I simply was like, oh, I'm too exhausted, I'm too exhausted, too exhausted, it's probably turned, it's, it's lent me some of the best um, opportunities and relationships that, are, that I've had in Hollywood. So what I was going to say is a takeaway. I just wanted to explain it, preface. And what I want to say is that it's that every opportunity that you get, when you get to that point where you feel as though you can't do anymore, it's usually when you push yourself past that threshold that you bear new fruit. Well, you're absolutely right about that. And, that kind of ties into my next question for you, which is with Thanksgiving right around the corner, what are you most thankful for this year? I'm, you know, I am most thankful for the life that I have. I can't even front, man. I feel like living in Puerto Rico and <laughs> having the amount of love that I have in my life. I'm talking about the, the health of my family, the, mm. uh, you know, the love of, of, of the love of my family and my niece and my newborn nephew, I just feel really blessed in that way. Um, and I also feel blessed that I feel as though I feel that there's this movement uh, that is bringing about awareness and justice to people of color in the United States. And I honestly feel like in this digital era, I feel like part of that movement. I feel like, you know, however small, I feel like a part of that equation. And you're I feel awesome. like I, I I feel that way about you because you're so active on social media. You're always engaging with people, and that's rare when the actors engage with their fans. Usually, <laughs> I hear that a lot. Person or they they pay someone, you know, a cousin, I see yeah. some friend, brother, sister, cousin, yeah. but uh, you are actually replying back to people, letting them know, giving it to the world. Like I love that about yeah. you. Yes, I think it's important. I honestly feel as though a big major problem with celebrity is that people tend, you know, especially if you have that old school mentality, you believe that there's somehow the others that you're on a different tier from the people who support you. And I just come from a world where my dad has always been like that. It's just there's no tier. There's no tier. It's just simply human being and ultimately it's when you engage that you actually get the opportunity to grow. So I, you know, like I said, I lived in friggin', I've lived in, I've lived in, in, in projects. I've lived in the projects. I've lived in trailer parks and I've lived, you know, in a Caribbean third world country and everybody has their biases and their opinions and, you know, their, their, their blocks. But when you actually engage and it, people are forced to see you as a human being, Mm-hmm. And that's where things change. And that's really a big problem in the United States is that we're not, we're not allowing one another to engage as human beings. Mm-hmm. So social media is like one Puerto step. Rico. 
Yeah, exactly. Living in Puerto Rico really, really opens me up to that. Exactly. It's like in Puerto Rico, you know, it's like living in New York. You can't do anything without engaging. It's impossible. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I'm over there is because um, it's important to me to, to, to feel as though I'm regarded as a human being. And, you know, it's funny because I know that there's a huge campaign. I yeah. know that there's a huge campaign that has been going on for – you know, a few centuries now, uh, actually pretty much since the start of America, to, to dehumanize Native Americans, to dehumanize um, uh, black people in the United States. But it's, it's, the sad thing is is that they don't have to do it no more because we do it to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, let's be real. Um, what a, You know, you see somebody getting their ass whipped and you point your phone at it, Somebody, yeah. uh, uh, you know, somebody's child getting beat bloody, and you point your camera at it. Mm-hmm. That's your response. Of that tells in. me instead of breaking that up, instead of like mm-hmm. you know preventing it before that, that's a sign of like you know mm-hmm. the disconnect to me. I mean, yeah. you know, what I mean, I, I get, I you know, I, I I see, I see blood, I see people fighting, I see, you know, I don't care what race you are, I get queasy, yo, I get queasy, like oh. So, hey, I, we want people to regard us as human beings. We got to regard us as human beings first. Mm-hmm. Now, with the man of your caliber, I know you do a lot of, like I said, social media, a lot of reaching out to your fans. How do you balance it all with your personal life and your career? How do you do it? Um, I don't know if you noticed, but for me it happens. It all happens in spurts. Um, okay. When it's time to engage my family and whatnot, I kind of, I do that in private and you may not see me as much on social media, oh, okay. but you know, I look at social media as an, as an, it's equally important to me as is doing a movie for Will Packer. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I don't look at social media as a separate or a hybrid of it's part of it. There's a video out there right now. that's like at 4 million views. And I've responded to his, at least 9,000 people on that damn thing. And the reason is because that's part of work. That has done as much, or it's done, it's done so much for my profile. It's had, it's, that thing's had more views and engagement than some of the sh- TV shows I've been on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so um, the way that I tend to do it is uh, I usually start my morning, my morning off for me, which means, you know, me, my family, my workout, that kind of thing, get my head together. And then I break my day up into a couple hours of social media to usually anywhere between three to four, because I burn out after two to three hours of anything. <laughs> so I'll do like, you know, so I'll do two yeah. to three hours of writing, two to three hours of writing. So yeah. and, and in between that, there'll be a lunch break, and then I'll come back and do a little follow-up on my social media. And then once 7 o'clock hits, I'm kind of back with my family, you know? Okay. Yeah, I mean, if, 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 I don't know if I've answered the question, but that, that's my Yes, answer. no, 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 you, you definitely, definitely answered the question. Okay. Well, just to kind of switch gears here, I want to congratulate you on your upcoming film, Prison Logic, the mockumentary. Yes, thank and you. And I personally have been a huge fan of TJ, a.k.a. T. <laughs> Jackson, and it was like, oh, thank don't you. say that, don't say that. I know. I was like, when you launched the crowdfunding, I immediately like donated. <laughs> so, Yo, I love it. Let me just tell you. <laughs> let me just thank you and just say how tell you that I it, that first of all that really means a lot. And you know, oh, I, I can't explain it, man. Anybody who takes their hard earned money to contribute <laughs> to this project coming together must really get it. And it really means a lot to me that somebody actually gets it because, you know, and the reason I say that is because in the world of commerciality and having sponsors approve your work, people are afraid to associate with this project. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've had big name people. I get jobs from Russell Simmons because of that project, because of TJ. And so, you know, it just, in fact, I just hosted last night this thing. It's called, you know, All This Digital did a thing called Roast of America. So it's a roast, but they're, we're roasting America. It's pretty <laughs> funny. It's pretty funny, man. A lot of good comedians on there. Ida Rodriguez. Um, Where can people watch I, that? 
Ty Rivera. Uh, it's going to be on uh, TV One. Okay. Uh, it's it's, it's going to come on on you know on election night because that was kind of the point. Of but it's also. Um, Ty Rivera, I want to say Earthquake, Donnell Rawlings, who everybody knows as Ashley Larry. Uh, 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 there's a bunch of people, a bunch of names on it. Mm-hmm. It was good. Um, so, but, um, you know, this Tijuana Jackson project is something that's really dear to my heart because I really have witnessed it work and actually reach people who would write these lessons and, these, and this insight and this, uh, you know, philosophy office corny. Yes. Now, I for actually certain watched readers who are unfamiliar with Tijuana Jackson, can you explain to them just a little bit about TJ and about this yes. project? TJ is a character that I created in 2000. Um, he is an ex-convict turned motivational speaker. And, you know, everybody's got that crazy uncle. TJ's kind of that crazy <laughs> uncle who goes deep with everything he says. But even though it's deep, it's crazy funny. But the yes. sad thing about all of TJ's references are we are talking about an institutionalized man. And so as an institutionalized man, all of his references are always somehow prison-related. You get what I'm saying? So um, it makes it even crazier and even more funny. Your uncle who's, yes. who's been in and out of jail telling you about how to live your life. And in this indirect way, he's making great points, but in an indirect way, he's kind of really just preparing you for prison. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason that the character is so important to me is because I once went to jail and in that instance I learned really quickly that um, prison culture is deeply ingrained in, uh, in black American culture mm-hmm. and what I mean by that is that the first way that it hit me was that I realized you know there were a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of terminology that's used in, in jail and in prisons that is often used on the streets. There's a, we interpret the guy who's, done, who's been to prison and, you know, and done hard time and maybe even done some dirt um, to be the real dude, and we often will interpret the person who's intellectual, uh, you know, well-studied, perhaps even well-traveled. We'll interpret that person as bougie or not real or not, you know, or ain't really black, you know. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I've been on both sides of that coin, um, and I believe there's a lot more to it. If you've gone to any HBCU, you've got your friggin', you've got your your stoners over here. You've got you know you got your, yeah. your, your, your you know intellects right, but they're broken up in mm-hmm. science, academics. You know, I mean, I mean science, yeah. literature. You know, what I'm saying you've got every you got you got your surfers over here it's hilarious <laughs> your goth it's, can't forget the goth crowd you got your goth it's like you know and so <laughs> you know it's unfortunate that we have we had been conditioned to interpret those who had not been institutionalized as not real whether we were aware of it or not and mm. then the other part of that equation that really stood out to me was is that how many of us are being arrested which led me into reading books like um Slavery by another name, written by uh, Larry A. Blackman, um, uh, the new Jim Crow, uh, Michelle Alexander, um, reading books by uh, I think his name is uh, Kozel, Jonathan Kozel, um, uh, uh, Savage Inequalities. Anyway, just basically started opening my eyes up to how the prison industrial complex was actually set up intentionally to create a certain dynamic within the black community for the sake of profit. And that really made me even, and I, I only learned that years after I started TJ, but it made me really even more passionate about using that voice and using that character mm-hmm. to, um, you know, to, to, you know, as a form of satire to make us aware yeah. of things that we've either consciously or subconsciously chosen, right, mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, to emulate. You know, the sagging, yo, my, yeah. my godfather, I'm 40, I'm, you know, I'm 48. I'll be 48 in November. My godfather. Black say it again. I said I'm black, black don't crack. Crack. <laughs> right, right. You still like um, you in your 20s. You. <laughs> thank you. My 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 my, my godfather, mm-hmm. Sherlin, Uncle Sherlin. He he was a correctional officer when I was growing up. Sagging was something that started in prison. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That was the way of them telling the warden to kiss their ass. And it became, and there's so many things like that, so many terms and phrases and stances that we take that are heavily influenced by that institution. 
And so I think that I love using a certain amount of satire and using a, a character that's come from that place to teach about introspection, to teach about healing, to teach about, you know, self-actualization, to teach about authenticity, to teach about the importance of culture and tradition. I love using a character like this to get that message across because for whatever reason, all those kids that call me corny and whatever, they friggin' love TJ. <laughs> they love me now because of TJ, you know? Yeah. So, well, I um, that, that character. I so, cannot wait for it, that movie to come out. Thank you. It's definitely going to be a completely different tone. It's definitely more of an independent movie. It's not a big mm-hmm. budget movie, but it's going to be a very independent tone of just some nuggets that you will carry with you for the rest of your life until you outgrow them and then you pass them on to the next generation. I watch the YouTube videos all the time, so oh. <laughs> I strongly encourage people to go to YouTube and watch Tijuana Jackson videos because it will have you dying. Um, you. I want to know, like, what you can, advice you can go to prison, you, for... you can go to PrisonLogic.com right oh, now yes, and support yes. my PrisonLogic.com campaign. You can add money to this campaign so that we can make a bigger movie, so that we can hire celebrities. Because we've raised, we've raised the initial goal, but our yeah. stretch goal is, is what's going to allow us to bring big names into it and possibly get, you know, an actual theatrical release. So please, please, please go to prisonlogic.com and check it out. Thank you for giving that to our readers. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, you're welcome. I want to know what advice you have for other up-and-coming actors starting out in the business um, what would you say to them? What advice? Well, you know, you, you, you can go to RomneyMalco.com because I'm always giving that kind of advice. But I'll tell you, mm-hmm. for your readers, you know, uh, the first thing, you know, if you go to RomneyMalco.com and look at my blog, there's stuff there for writers, for actors, for everybody. And what it all boils down to for me is in this era, it's, it's sad because we've all grown up, on, you know, influenced by a lot of big stars like Denzel Washington, Robert De Niro, mm-hmm. Uh, 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 you know, Sidney Poitier, um, you know, we've seen the success of, of uh, Halle Berry, Angela Bassett, uh, you know, Meryl Streep. Um, and, you know, now you've got, you know, you've got people like, you know, Sean Durant, you've got a lot, you know, there's a lot of, 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 of success stories. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the business model, the people that are the most disposable in our industry are the people who are waiting for a job, who are looking to be hired. We're in an era now where this is a business of, that, is, that is dominated by self-generators, meaning you have to do the work now. Mm-hmm. So people say, yo, put me in your movie. Yo, I want to write with you. What that really translate, translates to me as is make it easy for me. Because if you don't have a body of work, whether it's a digital body of work, whether it's a, a working reel of, 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 of some acting that you've done in, in other projects or projects yeah. that you've created yourself, as far as I'm concerned, you're just, you're just a dreamer. Yes. And I'm telling you right now, I'm much more nurturing than Hollywood is. So if I'm saying that, I can't even imagine what Hollywood's saying. <laughs> so bottom line is you have to mold yourself into a self-generator because the key mm-hmm. to this industry in this era is it's not about being discovered. It is about discovering yourself. Mm-hmm. It takes years of investment to build your following, and that following influences the agent to sign you. It influences the casting agent or the manager to sign you, the casting agent to give you a little shot in their TV show or to give you a shot in their commercial, it takes work. People are looking for the self-generators. They're Mm -hmm. scrolling through people's social media to find who they cast. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that you have to do what other people are doing in social media. It doesn't mean that you have to even do social media, but it does mean that you have to create your own content. Mm -hmm. Or you have to be a part of people who are creating their own content. Be involved in people's independent films. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, it's it's eye-opening. When you've auditioned for 17 student films and you don't get hired for one, it might be a sign. It might be a little (laughs) wake-up call for you right there. Hey, maybe you might be better on the other side of the camera. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, it's sure. so, yeah. but, but people don't want to subject themselves to that rejection. They don't want to subject mm-hmm. themselves to that reality, and then they want a shot in Hollywood. Yo, Hollywood mm-hmm. is major leagues, Papa, and anybody that you know playing in the NBA, NFL, whatever, they pay some dues. And they didn't pay two years of dues, you know what I'm saying, They're more like 20. Yeah. So get ready to put in your, you know, as Malcolm Gladwell put it in, you know what I mean? Go on and get your 10,000 hours. Get your 10,000 hours and let's do this. Thank you so much. And You're welcome. I, want to know I know it's sobering and probably not the most encouraging thing you'll ever hear, but I'm trying to see people make it. And I just honestly believe that one of the reasons that we suffer as a people is because we don't have a genuine gauge of reality because of the history and the information that we've been sold. Even this crowdfunding campaign that I've been doing, the story that I've been told and how these campaigns have gone about succeeding is a complete lie to what, really, what it really takes to make a crowdfunding campaign successful. And so I'm just telling you all right now, rather than telling you the feel-good story that makes me look good and makes it look like fun, I'm just telling you the truth, and that is the truth. So I'm sorry. I Your next feel question. like it's refreshing because a lot of people don't give it to people real. They're always BSing them or giving them, the, well, if you just try, 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 versus saying, no, you've got to be out on your grind. You have to hustle for yourself. You have to hustle for your name. Yes. And you tell people the truth, the harsh truth, but it's the truth, and people need to hear it and listen to it. So I appreciate the realness. I feel like I'm talking to one of my friends in my head. With uh, friends, so. <laughs> good. No, that's, that's good. That, you are talking to one of your friends. Yes, and, yes, because I'm like, and, oh, I'm, if I wasn't on I wanna, a time limit, I would have been like, yo, yo, what about this? You know, what about that? Yeah, 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 no doubt, right? But that's beautiful because that's how it should feel. We really should be – I can't walk past nobody. I don't like walking past my people without saying what's up. Mm-hmm. And that comes with a much higher consequence for me than it does for the average person because people are like, oh, dude, let me get a picture. That's so-and-so, that's so-and-so. And it can really slow my day down. But I really feel mm-hmm. it's important. It is important that part of being it's, – it's, it's called community parenting. It's called, you know what I mean, being part of a community. It's like acknowledgement of one another and ex- keeping mm-hmm. it real with one another. It's like I don't understand how people do it different. I really don't. And also, I keep it real. I could be like, yeah, you know, oh, my crowdfunding campaign is, 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 is so successful because everybody in social media jumped on and they just love the project so much. No, my crowdfunding campaign is successful because friends that I knew, I knew what time they got off work. I rolled up at their crib and was waiting for them outside the house and was like, yo, if you plan to get in your house, you're going to have to contribute to this campaign. <laughs> oh, man, well, I only got credit cards. That's cool. I can do it on my phone. <laughs> you know? It, it's not what people think. I raised a third of that money before that campaign even started. I had a third of that money committed from people before I even started. You know? Mm-hmm. It's what it takes, yo. It's what it really takes. And so, anyway, if you want to do, talk about crowdfunding campaigns, talk to me, please. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm sorry. What your next question? Oh, no, no, no. You're good. You're good. Before we go, I want to know, what would you like to tell your fans? Anything. Anything in your closing statement? Oh, I would like to tell my fans that if you are creating content, don't rely so heavily on social media. You should have your own platform, your own page your own website. And don't get me wrong, social media is cool, but it has to monetize itself. So what eventually happens is they're going to charge you to reach the people you've bought to their platform. So consider having your own website and a mailing list. It's a great way to access people. Maybe even you create a list of people who want to be text. There are great apps for that out there as well. That's one thing. Self-generate and protect your content. And another thing I want to say is, is that um, is that we have to start treating one another as human beings. Mm-hmm. And we have to let go of all of these preconceived notions of what the next person is going to say, what the next person thinks of you, and what the next person thinks. And we kind of have to start approaching one another from a place of love. And if someone's going to prove us wrong, let them prove us wrong. But we can't go into it assuming that they're already wrong. Uh, that you're already wrong. So um, lead with love. And lastly, go to prisonlogic.com and please support Tijuana Jackson. And if you're not 100% convinced, just go to, you know, go to YouTube, look up TJ, listen to the messages. Are you being hunted? Why, why poor people shop so much? Why we have bad relationships? The Obama keychain heist. 
Go watch those videos and see how they affect you. And if that touches you, then go to prisonlogic.com. Make a contribution to a campaign that I believe is the beginning of a new form of entertainment. Uh, it's like an edutainment that explains the importance of introspection and the importance of having a philosophy that you live by and the importance of, 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 of self-awareness and authenticity. Check it out, please, prisonlogic.com. That's what I would say to my fans. Excellent. We're actually going to have the link on the bottom of the page so people can click on it right then and there. And Tini would like to thank you, Romani Malco, for speaking with us today and just keeping us up to date on all of your upcoming projects. Everyone who subscribed, send your people here, and we'll put everything in the magazine so they'll be able to watch everything and they won't miss anything. I'm looking forward to reading it, and I should be thanking you. In fact, I am thanking you. <laughs> Have a blessed afternoon. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You too. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Work hard and stay happy. Hey, t &E fans. We hope you enjoyed this video today. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our amazing interviews, how-to videos, or knowing what's going on in the t &E community. So subscribe now. We look forward to getting your input on this video.